Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Jones. Welcome to Dial the Gate. Uh, yep, I'm the. You're you're listening to the Gatekeeper, the um, the tech guy, the Chevron guy, and through many iterations, I ended up as Chief Master Sergeant Walter Harriman, um, who allowed people to come in and out of the gate, and I'm doing it here from the from the luxury of my own uh, apartment in Vancouver. I'm bringing somebody through the gate. And I'm talking today to a fan, Jen Kirby. Jen, welcome. Thank you, Gary. I appreciate your time. Oh, lovely to talk to you. Lovely to see you. Now, you, what, where are you? What have you got in the background there? I would think you would recognize it, but maybe not. It's the, it's the control room. Yeah. How did you end up with that? Uh, a beautiful thing called uh, movie effects. So... <laughs> It looks really good. It I looks can't really think good. I spent many, many an hour there. Oh yeah, there it is. That's the that's um, just so that there's no like, Stargate Network is actually a uh, person who's working on a simulation game for a Stargate game actually. So. Oh really? Wanted to just toss that out there. Oh cool, cool. Um, tell us a little bit about uh, why you're such a super fan and why the. Why, what, you know, the kind of impact that the show has made on your life in a, in a positive way? What's, what's going on? Um, well, I'm, I'm from Kansas City. I'm originally actually from St. Louis, but transferred to KC back in 2005. So it's been a while. Um, I had a really dark kind of childhood and uh, Stargate was actually my little piece of comfort that I could have um, in my bedroom when I'd go to isolate myself. Um, and the reason I'd have to isolate myself is due to the fact of uh, bullies. And then I had a uh, fairly uh, unstable relationship at home with my father. And uh, Stargate was kind of my way to escape reality. Yeah. And it actually was the, um, the one show that kind of boosted me into wanting to get into making um, TV and film, uh, acting and anything behind the scenes. I kind of want to do it all. They need a Jack and Jill of all trades kind of spot in the industry, I swear. Um, so it's, it's kind of been my, my little beacon of light that I've been following. Um, and I was there, uh, let's see here, the movie came out when I was four, but I still remember watching it as soon as it kind of came out on VHS. Um, I didn't catch the premiere of SG-1, but I came in halfway through season one. So I've kind of been here since the beginning um, I'm just a late bloomer. Um, I'm 30 now and uh, just finally starting to make steps in life towards my goals and my dreams. And I swear that Stargate has been the one solid line track that I've had to follow um, to getting where I am now. Oh, wow. Incredible. So what kind of qualities uh, did, the, did the show have that, that, that you kind of went, okay, this is really helping me? Like, what did you what what was presented to you um i got to tell amanda tapping this last year at uh, the gateway convention in chicago um my mother was uh, emotionally distant for a lot of my life and uh her character kind of stood in as a mother figure that i needed um and jack was kind of the um father figure in a way but also the future husband arc, you know, kind of stereotype that I wanted, you know, so I was, I used to joke all the time that I was going to marry Richard Dean Anderson. Um, I'm still waiting for that proposal. Anywho, it's, uh, the characters just kind of added in um, family members that I was lacking, even though they were there presently. Um, just, you know, I, I needed somebody. I didn't have any friends growing up. I think I had got friends, like actual friends, when I started junior high. Uh, oh. So, for the longest time, SG-1 and, and you and Dawn and stuff like that, you guys were my best friends and also family members. So it was, it, it, it just really hit home. So it kind of gave me what I needed to keep going. Oh my God. You know, I hear these stories over and over and it never fails to kind of amaze me that, that, the, that, a, sh that a show, you know, like when I'm on the show, when I, when, when I was, when I was actually, when the show was in production and I was filming, you don't think of these things at all. You don't, you have no idea. I mean, to be honest, 
because I'd never been to conventions before and sci-fi conventions have a, you know, sci-fi fans are, are pretty, pretty, uh, hardcore. And, uh, and it was, it was my first opportunity to actually meet, uh, to meet fans. It, it, all, like, like, like as close to real time as possible. Like you could go to a convention and they would talk to you about episodes and about the impact that you'd made on, on their lives. And you, that just doesn't happen in, uh, in other, um, in other uh, ch- uh, genres or shows, you know? Yeah. Uh, so, um, so yeah. Yeah. Um, that that I that I uh, I noticed and and it's just, it, but but again, like you can hear it over and over and over, and it just still has an impact that that a show that I was in has affected people so positively, you know. So, yeah. So it's it's incredible. It's really lovely to hear. Yeah, and it uh, I'm I'm making slow steps to getting into the industry. Um, I might have a mentor who actually worked on Stargate uh, to help me with acting. I'm not going to say his name because I'm not 100% sure if we're going to land that or not yet. Um, but uh, I swear to God, since Stargate got on Netflix now, um, it's not a matter of like what's going to happen to it. It's a matter of when now, especially since they're, sh- they're working behind the scenes on another series. And I guarantee you, Gary, without a doubt, you'll probably be on it once it hits the once it finally gets into the you know into the production room and we're we're finally at that stage, I have no doubt that they'll bring you back. You're just or, just too awesome. <laughs> I love your character. Can I be? Is there such a thing as being too awesome? I I don't know. I don't being, think so. <laughs> being awesome's enough. You know, too awesome that just crosses over into some other area that uh, I'm uncomfortable with. <laughs> Um, man, if the show ever come back, oh God, I would love to, if it came back in some other iteration, I, you know, I'd like to show up with, uh, with my, with, the, with my beard and, uh, and, uh, say, you know, they brought me out of retirement. That would be so great. Oh yeah. I, I can totally see the whole the beard coming in and, and the, the outfit would just kind of complete the rest of it, you know? Yeah, and I actually still fit into that flight suit, believe it or not. I still I can get into it. <laughs> I have no is, doubt you probably have your own ship by now. Which is a, which is incredible to me. Like after since, you know, I was when, when I mean, I wasn't wearing that outfit at the beginning. I was more like in a shirt and a car like I used to call it my combat cardigan. You know, a little short sleeve shirt and a, and a cardigan and and then they, they eventually started putting me in like blue and green flight suits, which were really fun. It looked way more military than, than uh, the other stuff, you know, but, but uh, yeah, no, at this point, after, if the show has been on, uh, you know, off the air for so long, if it ever came back, because obviously here I am doing Dialogate, there's still fans who love the show and would still love to see the show, you know? So, and uh Netflix has picked it up and now it's going to be on Netflix which is just amazing to me you know it's just like stunning it it never stops growing either it keeps bringing in new people and um it's just amazing because I've met so many people in different ways thanks to the show and um and I never thought I'd be able to. So uh, when I was 26, I actually got to meet Richard Dean Anderson. He he was the first Stargate actor I got to meet. Um, and it was well, you, went right, you went right to the top. Huh? You went right to the top. Yes, I did. I was awake for 42 hours straight uh, working on a painting for him. I got on the plane. I missed my layover because they didn't announce it. Um, I got to the convention right as he was doing his Q&A. Um, Met my friend Ryan Nixon. You might know him. Oh, I know Ryan. Yeah, Ryan Stitch, Nixon. Stitches loft. He's a he's a kind of thanks Ryan for the for the outfit. Um, Ryan is the best. I love that guy. Stitch. Shout out to Stitches Loft. He's the guy that makes all the patches, and you know he's worked on so many shows that uh, that um, you know require stitches and you know patches, and and he can. Uh, I in fact. Here's something. 
I got to meet Ryan at these other conventions and I ended up pitching a show with some guys, a couple of other guys to Netflix down in LA. I pitched it and it was a show uh, that had a kind of a military component to it. And Ryan provided us with fake patches like, and I called him, I said, could you design something for me? And when we went down, we took these patches with us and we gave them to the executive, the, the, to the people that we were pitching. We said, you know, like we've actually done all this background research on our show and, and uh, here's a couple of patches that, uh, that we could foresee our sh uh, the people on our show wearing. So that was, re he's, been, he's awesome. He's a great guy. He is. He's, he's helped me out a lot. And um, he's probably the only reason I got to meet Richard Dean Anderson as well. Um, and he's been a great friend. I've made many, many friends. Uh, David Reed here, I met last year. It was my first uh, gate, like dedicated Stargate convention was last year. Um, otherwise, I'd always just done local um, conventions. And uh, the way I met David Reed is really funny. He might be able to tell you the story. I don't know. <laughs> Um, we were pulling a prank on my mom and it ended up with a, I don't know if you know, Remington Phillips, uh, and Brian Cruz, who he, we call him Fojo Flanagan because he looks exactly. Oh, I know Fojo. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So we were pulling a prank on my mom that I was on, out on like a dinner date with Joe Flanagan and she was buying it. And, uh, the way that I got to meet David Reed was me and Remy were, um, back at his hotel room that he was sharing with David. And David walks in on me taking a picture of Remington in his bed, looking passed out and drunk, and <laughs> it was funny. And that's how I met David Reed. <laughs> He's like, <Right>. <laughs> he, he just walked in and was like, what's going on here? Uh, so it's, it's funny how I've met some of these people, um, and just it's just through one show, and it's mind-boggling. Yeah. Well, it's fun. well, what, what's amazing to me is that you've just mentioned two other fans. And I know them both. It's hilarious. And I've had a lot of interaction with uh, Ryan Nixon. And I, and I think I met Fojo Flanagan at the last convention I was at. And uh, lovely guy. Yeah. Anyway, and he looks exactly like Joe Flanagan. It's amazing. Yes. Um, he actually jumped in on my Joe Flanagan um photo op and uh, it was kind of the talk of the show or the yeah. convention last year and it made it look like joe was proposing to me and was like pushing away brian and or fojo and it was funny it was the picture was being kind of passed around the convention the entire time so oh uh, that was you in that photo i, I know that photo me. Uh, and in my photo with you i didn't know like you were so excited to be there i think i was like your first maybe maybe second or third person in line and you ran in and grabbed my hand and kissed it. And I'm sitting there going like, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I remember Instagramming you saying like, I want to retake. Because <laughs> I looked about, so... That sounds about my, my speed. Yeah. Oh, I, was, I loved it. I still have it. I have to frame all of them still. But yeah, it oh, was... Oh, that's great. It, it was amazing. And I, I'm ready for GateCon because I got to go up to Vancouver first time last year as well with my sister. Right. Um, and I fell in love with Vancouver. I called my mom. I said, we're moving. <laughs> we're not, we're leaving Missouri. We're coming to Vancouver. That's it. That's all that's said and done. And uh, I'm, I'm praying GateCon is on for next year. Cause I yeah, let's hope. Let's hope. Yeah. It would be good to be going back to uh, more conventions for sure. Miss everybody. In the meantime, this is what we're doing. We're doing Zoom uh, meetings. And uh, so I want to just take this opportunity to thank you so much for, uh, for joining me today, Jan. It's been great talking to you. Thanks for putting in the, uh, you know, getting the, the outfit on and the background and everything. You look fantastic. Thank you. Um, really great talking to you. Thanks again. And we'll talk again soon. Sounds great. Thank you, Gary. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this episode. Hey, do you want to share your Stargate story on air with me? Email the show at dialthegateshow at gmail.com. That's dialthegateshow at gmail.com. Tell us a little bit about how Stargate has helped you grow as a person or affected your life in a positive way. And uh, I'll be recording more fan interviews in 2021. And you might be next. See you next time.